JD and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be assembling a American Waltham full plate pocket watch, likely from the late 1800s. I'll have to look up the serial number for this baby. But it has gone through the wash machine and it is stacked in the wash machine cleaning baskets. There, I remembered. So it's in the wash machine cleaning baskets. Um, so let's get on with uh, putting this thing together. Hey, how you doing out there in pocket watch land? Um, so let's get at reassembly of this Waltham, American Watch Company Waltham pocket watch. So all the parts have been cleaned and they're, and they're in a basket. And just like somebody told me, I better put a glove on or I'm going to get some comments. I was going to reassemble the 7750 today, but the problem I have is the 7750, um, I need to get this watch out of the way so I have room to reassemble the 7750. That's my issue. All right, dual black gloves. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm going to be picking parts of the basket. So I look, just looked at the 7750 uh, parts, and man, they're small compared to the uh, pocket watch parts. So um, I know it's going to be a challenge, but I'll likely do that. This is the morning still. I'll likely attack that in the afternoon. So the first thing we're going to do is just remove parts from the basket um, and put them aside. So I'm just putting them up top here <clears throat> that way, but we'll keep the close up going here. And I want to look inside the baskets to make sure there aren't any leftover screws. Um, I could just dump the basket, but I'm very anal retentive. So this pocket watch had a very good cleaning. I'm a telling you, I am a telling you. So now it needs a good assembly and oiling. So these are just generic parts coming out here. These are um, this part. These are just the screws for the case. Um, and I just noticed something. There's some something stuck on here. Wow, this is amazing. What is this? It's a piece of dirt from something. I'll just keep an eye on those parts, man, because parts want to walk. Parts want to walk. So there's the cage. That's the top basket. Put that aside. Now I got to bring these little mini baskets out. So these are good to have um, in your watch cleaning machine because the um, the mini ma the mini baskets are good for the small parts, and you got to be able to take them out too. So because I have a glove on, it's not as easy for me. I'll I'm going to get a screwdriver and just wedge a screwdriver in here and just get that screwdriver in there and wedge it in like that and then just twist and it's going to come out. Now in this case I am going to dump the baskets. I've tried to to group the screws and stuff so what I'll do, let me just back this up a bit like that. There we go and I'll just dump the baskets here and then again like I said you want to look inside the basket and make sure there's no little tiny screws stuck in the cor on the edges on the side walls and then put that on top and get it out of the way next basket Let's see what I got here now I know I tried to group these screws with the baskets it's not as critical with a pocket watch because um, there's not as many small screws and I'm telling you that Valjou 7750 has got some small screws so in this case, I uh, put the escapement in the basket and it looks like it's kind of jammed onto the side. There we go. Nice and easy. And I can just put the escapement aside and that'll be nice and clean. Now, and then again, put it back together. Hope this isn't boring you too much. I know some people uh, watch these watch videos and go, oh my God, stop talking. Stop talking. I just want to see it being done. I watch the wrist watch wrist watch revival channel every now and then and and uh, it's pretty good I mean it's probably more professionally done than mine uh, but I'm not in this to make money I'm in this to have some fun so there you go so I just get this last basket open and I do take a lot of care and I don't think the the dude on wrist watch revival can make parts on a lathe either and I've got videos on doing that, as you've seen me do it in the past. And uh, so I'm trying to teach people how to do pretty much everything. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not a. I'm a self-trained watchmaker, which means I've got a full library of books and I've spent a long time studying and practicing. And <clears throat> in case you're curious, 
the way I learned how to become a watchmaker is I started off with uh, this uh, gentleman who cleaned my Seiko dive watch and did a shitty job. And I said, what, what went wrong here? These are the plates coming out here, which are nice, nice and clean. Wow, that's a night and day difference with these plates. Very nice. Um, I was wondering what went wrong with this specific uh, job that this guy was doing. And and it looked like he didn't even clean the watch. He looked like he just, I called him up like four weeks later. That's nice and clean there too. It's a great job. Called him up four weeks later. And uh, so that's W.M. Elry, Waltham, Waltham, Massachusetts. W.M. Elry. So that's probably one of the guys who wa worked in the watch company or it was made for a gentleman called W.M. Ellery. Let me just dump these screws here and I wanna, I think these are all the same size, but these ones here are blued, right? And I'm just gonna take them all out and see which ones look different. So this one actually looks different than those. So just screw grouping, screw grouping. Grouping of the screws. These ones look a little shorter. Yeah, I'll have to, Look at these closer when I reassemble because those are the screws for the plates for the top. And I don't want to screw that up. Pardon the sense of humor again. So um, anyway, so the guy didn't clean the watch and I started getting curious. And I was like, okay, this thing is still running fast, which means it's dirty usually. Um, and what did he do other than put his name on it? And he actually put his name on the uh, watch on the inside of the case back after I went to the store to pick it up. So I think I got ripped off there. And he, and he said he forgot to take photos because he usually took photos of the watch disassembled and he forgot quotes to take photos, which means he didn't take photos. That's a double quote. That's sarcasm in the world of quotes. So I've got the basket back together again, which is nice. So that's ready for the, uh, 7750 and I just put that aside. I have actually have two baskets for my watch cleaning machine, but I only have six small baskets. So here we go. So this, um, yeah, that's that there, that there, and that, that there, 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 that thing there, that, that there, another thing there. And it's going to be a a little bit of a memory job to put this thing together again. I did take a few photos, uh, which helps when you're putting together uh, mechanisms, um, and you don't know what the hell you're doing. So you got to take some photos. There's the cannon pinion. There is the. Uh, that's not the cannon pinion. That's the hour wheel. There's the middle. Let's see, minute wheel. There's the cannon pinion there, all nice and clean. A click spring here. I suspect that this is the screw that goes on top of this here. Um, the click spring, I'm not, I can't remember whether it has a post or not, but, or a screw. I don't think it has a screw. It goes onto a post, so it's not a problem there. And then there's the center of the watch. So what the first thing I'm going to do is go get my amazing Myers number 58 watch movement holder. All right, I've got my Myers number 58 watch movement holder, and I want to put a little bit of oil under this uh, lever set mechanism, only because it feels a little bit rough when I'm pulling it out. And I want to put just a dab of oil on the spring there too, but first I'm going to put it upside down and put it in the movement holder. And then I'm going to put a little bit of oil on it. Hopefully it doesn't snap back. Now it's actually supposed to snap back, so, but it didn't didn't and i've got some oil here different grades of it and i'm going to put this over on the side where it's kind of out of the way and, and it's not it's pretty good i've pretty good pretty clean container here even though i uh it's not my newest oil con oiler container and you want to have a piece of this stuff here like this and that's to clean off your oilers right before you use them so in this case I've got the blue oiler and I've got which is for fine work and I've got the red oiler right which is for finer work this looks like it's for finer work and then I got the yellow oiler which is for 
not that fine work. And you can see the oiler itself, it's got a pretty f uh, wide end on this side. So it's going to pick up a lot of oil. And you only want to use that. I've got my yellow oil. I won't go through all the different types of oil, but the yellow oil is the one It's like more consistent, the consistency of a grease. So I use that into in parts like this, and then I will rotate that around and put some oil on it. And that just loosens, not loosens, it oils up the uh, surface here where it touches. And you just tighten the movement up a bit. And before this folds in, um, I'm also going to put some oil on that, but I don't want it to, to be the greasy type oil. I want it to be, yeah, I want it to be this oil here, the red stuff. I'm just going to put a dab in there and then just flick that back. See if I can grab that and move it back and forth just a bit like that. Then I'm going to undo this, so play by play, and flip it over like that. And then, then, so it's on the surface here, like so. And then I want to make sure that, uh, that there's a little bit of oil. And I'll use the red stuff again for the inside of the spring where it catches the uh, part here. And that way there's a little bit of freedom of movement here. It does seem to be a little bit stiff coming around here, so which means pulling it out will be fine and I just have to flick it back with my finger. So that's because of the surface area here seems to be just a bit rough. Looks like it was grinded or ground or something in the past. Somebody may have done something with that in the past. Um, one thing is you don't want to put too much oil down because it'll end up uh, finding its way to other places of the watch. So that's not too bad there. It's a thin, thin layer of oil. And I'll just clean that off. Cap it up and then put it back into the oil. The Bergeron 2847. And this is for holding my oilers. Right. And uh, moving right along. Um, so I've got that done. Um, I don't want to put this, these mechanisms in yet. I think I want to, I'm trying to think which ones to put in first here. Hmm. Hmm. I think I could probably complete some of this before I, uh, you know, before I, you know, flip it around and then, and then put in the components on this side. So I'm just going to have to look at a photo of that first and make sure I've got it right. Um, I know that this this gear here goes right over the top of this thing here and there's a small spring in there so I actually want to oil that a bit too because I don't want that spring to catch just move this gear aside for a second but I want to put a little tiny bit of oil on that just a bit um, and that's just to get some movement on it there just a bit now like I've said before when you oil something if you pull it out fast into if you dip it in the oil pull it out fast you're not going to get as much oil on the oiler if you pull it out slowly you're going to get more oil so it's just a matter of uh, its feel for that to see whether you've got it right so but I got to look at the picture because I got a couple of gears here that I want to be able to put back and I don't want to screw it up so so what I've got is a pipe. Let's see, I'm just going to move these gears over to show you. And one, two, and there's a screw. Buckle my shoe. There's the gear, and then another gear. This is the goes on the inside of that. So I believe, I believe I can fly. I have to look at this because this goes over like that, right? And this little tiny. Um, pipe or whatever you want to call it it goes on the inside of this spring right here and I think it's so the spring has to be moved out of the way I don't think it goes on the other side so but I will take a look on the other side um, this gear here goes on top of this and I may we take one glove off because this glove is 
I don't use it for anything. So I could take it off, but I think I'll go cut my fingernails because they're disgusting looking. All right, there's a picture of what that looks like. And I'm seeing the bevel on that gear and the bevel on this gear here. And the bevel is smooth in the bottom and squared on the top. So I got to make sure that that bevel is the same way. And then there's a gear here that goes on. And I think it only, it could go either way I think I don't know if this is beveled either so I'm gonna have a look at that as well um, because I think it goes on I'm looking at the scratches on it to see which direction it goes on so I'm gonna have a boo at that and then uh, figure out how to do that so should I show you how it's done or should I do it that's the tricky part here what do I put on video what do I put on video? All of it or some of it? Holding the watch, the number 52 movement holder is amazing, but I got to get this thing down a bit and squeeze it in and then tighten it up. And I think that I know this little tiny pep on the side right there goes in the little tiny hole of that spring. So can I get it in there? Is it going to be an issue, right? This is magnetized. This is magnetized, which is not friggin' good. So I'm gonna demagnetize that right now. This is my demagnetizer that I'm going to use on the screwdriver right now. There, it's officially demagnetized. Let me test that. Okay, not picking up anything, which is perfect. So I've got to flip this over because I know that this is how it was brought in. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil right on the edge here. That'll find its way around as that gear turns. And a little tiny bit of oil on the pip part. It'll help put that in the position and then that's where the small gear rests right here so i think i need to zoom in a bit so you guys can see what's going on i put a little bit of oil in there too and that'll find its way around and then i need to i think this this part of the of the mechanism either goes this way or the other way i think it goes in later so i just have to look closer at everything. I'm going to have to move my seat down because I'm going to get down and dirty. Seat is now down. Now I get my elbows at the top. So again, I'm going to look at this to see if there's scratch marks and stuff that I can recognize to make sure this goes in the right direction. Right? So I'm looking at these little scratch marks. I want to make sure this goes, the gear goes back on the way I took it off. So that's what I'm going to do. I say so a lot. I apologize. I've got my little glasses on right now and I'm looking at it and I'm looking for scratch marks. And I'm seeing them on this side. I'm seeing the scratch marks on this side, which means this, this goes down like this, right? Um, over the top of this, like that. Come on, get in there. Don't be a bugger. Don't be a bugger. There we go. That floated in nicely. And then the other one has to sit in there too. But I believe this has to go underneath first. So I'm going to try this. Okay. I'm looking at this. There's an edge. Yeah, there's an edge on the inside. So this would go over like that first. And then the gear is beveled. I'm going to zoom in just a bit here so you guys can see what the heck I am doing. The gear is beveled and the bevel is up. Which means this goes over the top like this. Like that. Right? And then this here gear is the one that sits there, sits on top of this little spring here. Where the spring is sprung. And the whole assembly sits on this, um, where this little pip goes on top of that. So I think what I need to do then is put the assembly on. 
right? And then once the assembly is on, uh, I get my other finger in there. Do I want to do that? Once the assembly is on, then I can uh, screw it down lightly and then adjust that little pip on the end to make sure that fits in the right place. So I'm going to just put that down like this. I think this is going to be a challenging thing to do. So I'll get that down like that. And I think that little gear is good. And just put that screw in lightly so things don't fly out. I use my famous demagnetized screwdriver. Somebody told me that there's a really good two-story Canadian tire that is available now. So, so that's that there. Now i got to go to the other side of this because I think I may have a challenge getting that gear in place. Right. So if I flip this over, I'm trying not to touch anything with the other hand. You see where that spring is? I need to flip that down and then over, but I do not want to break that spring. So what I'm going to do is loosen the screw in the back to let that rotate. Right. So if I loosen the screw just a bit, just so everything is held together, I'm sure the factory the Waltham factory knew how to do this without any problems at all because they probably had jigs to show them how it's done all right so that's too loose because I see the thing is way out so let me screw it down a little bit more this is the harder stuff by the way these uh, setting mechanisms okay back it off just a bit and again, um, there it is there. Let me just put that in place here and see if I can rotate that around. Now, and i got to get deep and dirty here, which means i got to bend over. Ben doing. Ben doing. Ben done. And have a look at this and see how this works. That's it. So if I have, I need to move this little pip inside that spring, which is... A little bit tricky. I think I may need another hand. So I got it basically leaning against the edge right now, but I may need two screwdrivers to do this. So let's just grab another screwdriver, see if it's magnetized. Nope. So it's good. And what I want to do is move that over, but I'd like it to have a little bit of friction on the top of that spring before I push it in place. So there it is way over. And it's got to go up. So that's not going to go up like that. So let me just flip this over again. I'm going to get that other glove on because I'm having a problem. And I promised I wouldn't touch anything. So do not lie. Do not lie. Get a Bugs Bunny in my glove. I think I've called it that before. That's when you take the glove and you blow on the other end. It becomes a big glove. Whoever's got the biggest hand wins, as you guys can probably remember from that violent TV show called Bugs Bunny that they've now determined that's uh, way too violent for children. So, which I think is crap, but that's just my opinion. So now I'm going to tighten this down a bit. And the reason for that is that I, if I tighten it down, it's going to snug up more against that spring. And then when I move it sideways, it should pop into the spring hole so and I can see that it's already moved the spring up a bit so I'm gonna get in here now and try to keep my keep the screwdriver here while I move the spring over and see if that works yeah there you go so if I show that, you can see that. And let me see if I can point. And you see how the spring popped up. So what I did was tighten it a bit. And it allowed a little bit of pressure on the base of that spring without breaking it or bending it. And then I'm able to actually uh, move that in place. And so now all I need to do is tighten this screw down a bit and make sure it's working properly.
I've got that tightened down. I just have to make sure that it actually moves. Yeah, it's moving. You can see how that works. See that little that other uh, part here just pops up when that moves out of the way. So if I get a a bench key, for example, see if this is the right size. If I do this with a bench key, it's moving the gears nicely. And if I push in, uh, is it going to do anything? No, probably not. Oh yeah, it's not going to do anything because it needs its lever set. So if I pull the lever this way, right, that should move the whole mechanism over. I may have it a little bit too tight here because it doesn't want to move. So let me just loosen that a bit. And uh, let me see, do I have that too tight? Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit looser. And come on, buddy. There we go. So that's now in place and then if I put that it moves it back you see that it pushes this here and that'll move that back because that spring on the other side is doing its job right now I want to flip this over here I'm saying I want to flip it over I just I will now flip this over and I need to put I'm gonna put a little more oil on this right here because there's a lot of there's a lot of stress on this part here with the spring and if I put too much oil on there then I'm going to just dip some Rotico and poke it off so I'm going to grab my Rotico I've got a piece of Rotico right here fellas right here the world's biggest piece of Rodico. Why do I have the giant piece of Rodico here? I don't know. Somebody said Rodico leaves smudge marks. I was like, not the stuff I got. My Rodico is perfect. And you pull the Rodico apart and then fold it over. And then it shows you a clean surface. And I got a little tiny bit of oil right here that I'll just jab with the Rodico. That'll pick that up. So there we go. Now, it's important that that mechanism works perfectly. Because it, it's, you will not be able to, um, you can't, once you put it together, you won't be able to fix that, right? And you want to make sure the mechanism is absolutely perfect. I'm just tightening the screw that holds on to that spring so the spring doesn't move. And let me try this again to make sure I got I got movement on this. There it is there. Now I want a little bit of oil again. And I'm going to put the oil um, right where this touches the watch right there. That way it moves out of the way. And Sometimes I do move oil the gears as well if I if they seem to be a bit there we go that's much better pressure that's popping over and that spring's pushing that up nicely there it is there so I think that's working we shall see and when that when that twists this way it actually pushes that down so the wheel which is the minute wheel um, actually goes down. So that's how that works. So in this case here, I can complete this by I need to I need to grab this wheel here like this because that goes in here. But I'm going to take a look at the picture again because I want to make sure I got the right side. And is this beveled? So the gears don't look like they're beveled. But I can pick the side that's uh, scratchier. So this side here, that side here has got scratches on it. So. I'm going to see if I can find my other picture. And this side here seems more smooth. So I would put the smooth side down on the surface of this. Like that. And then the scratchy side. Um, upward. But I'm going to have a look at a photo to make sure. 
there as you can see in this photo that gear has got the scratches or these lines here are facing upward so I want to be able to put that back in the exact same way and then put the plate back to hold it on and put the click spring in as well so what I'm going to do here is take the click spring off I want the click spring to be in position first and then this gear here with the uh, scratches facing upward I just dropped it and that's correct there and then I'll take the click spring here and I probably don't need to oil this because this has to go on the inside like this it's got to push in from the inside so I probably have to have a screwdriver to help me here right so I will push this down a bit down and on the inside come on get in there there we go and then move the spring out of the way very carefully I'm going to use my tweezers to do that but at the same time I'm doing that I'm going to um, tighten this up just a bit I need to move my camera just a bit too you'll see my nervous legs as I shake putting this together again and let me see um, I need to use my golf voice so uh, ladies and gentlemen we're at the 18th hole he's got a six inch putt to win the tournament and his knees are starting to shake all right so that's in position now that's good there and because there's a lot of friction um, between the spring here and the click spring again i can put a little tiny bit of oil right there and because i'm anal retentive i'm going to put a little bit of oil here too that'll work itself around and because i'm super anal retentive i'm going to take the excess oil off the top of this because i do not want wandering oil and i believe i can fly i'm going to just put two lines of oil on the inside here which someone's going to yell at me and say why do you do that so and that is to allow that gear to move freely now, over time that'll that could collect dust and cause an issue but I will just take it apart wash it and fix it again that's what I'm going to do that's what I'm going to do but there's a lot of friction here with this little wheel turning around and I don't want that I want it to have a smooth surface and be able to turn freely so just drop that wheel in like that just drop in that wheel I took my glove off because it's freaking hand it gets so hot this one is fine this glove and I just move the click spring up and in place like this now I got it pressure on that wheel and I want to put the plate on top now and I got me plate and me plate screw I just have to grab the plate pardon me while I break up so the plate goes on like this this plate goes on like so where's the screw for it it's, the plate screw is part of the click spring so the plate's going on like this move this out of the way and that should conform perfectly with this hole and with the edges in here right for the mainspring for mining the mainspring and I have a screw here for the plate like that and when you tighten the screws on a, a watch or a pocket watch make sure you don't tighten things too hard I'm gonna go get my stick I bought the famous stick that I got so this is the stick I bought to hold parts down as I'm uh, doing my work instead of using a piece of pegwood which I've been using. So this is the Bergeron, Bergeron 7010. I got this on Amazon. Uh, it says new Bergeron plastic stick, very resistant watch tool. Probably not Bergeron, probably made in China, but good enough. And I'll show you what this looks like. And Mark, everybody knows who Mark is, who makes those instructional videos. He was using one of these sticks. I was like, I got to get me a stick. And the reason why I bought the stick in the first place was to be able to um, 
do the 7750, which has got a lot of springs you got to hold down. So, so let me just grab this screwdriver over here and very carefully hold this down because that's why I wanted to use a stick and then use the screwdriver to screw this in very carefully. There we go. I decided not to cut my fingernails. So anybody out there that doesn't like my fingernails, go jump. There. So you tighten these screws down, but if you over tighten them, you're going to have problems. Um, but just the saying, okay? So now when this thing is, let me just get that bench, the bench screw in here again, or bench whatever. So as I turn this here, you'll see that it turns that wheel. And then the click spring under there, you can hear that click like that. That'll prevent it from coming back. And then I'll just show you how this works. But when I pull out the lever set mechanism on this, I'll just put this. I'm going to just throw this in for now, um, which should go right in like that. There we go. See, when I'm turning this now, you'll see that the it won't turn, shouldn't turn the minute wheel. See, there we go. But the second I hit that lever set mechanism, of course it's buried. There we go. The second I pull that lever set mechanism out like that, that'll see that springs back nicely now. That'll basically take this part, move it over. It'll allow that little gear on the top to ride up because it's being pushed up by a spring. And then when I turn this, it should make everything move. Let's see if this, this works. Yeah, there we go. So it's allowing everything to move right now. Um, feels a bit weird, but I need to put a bit of oil on this thing, I think, because it's, it's working, but it feels, it just feels a bit rough. But it is turning the time, so let me put a bit of oil on this. So I think that it should be, uh, a little smoother than what I'm feeling. So I'm just going to put one on the teeth here. Like that. And then a little bit on the teeth over here. Like that. And I do have to make sure that this this is uh, not nicely in place, not screwed down too hard, blah blah blah. Yada yada yada. And it's turning everything. So there we go. That's a bit better. Still feels a bit rough. It should be turning nice and smoothly, which and not clicking. And it seems to be a bit of a roughness in the turning of this thing. So let me just look at this screw here and see if this is not tight enough or too tight or something, right? Well it is turning. So, so there, but it is, oh, I know what it is. It is, it is, it's not the gears from that side, it's this bugger. So when this bugger needs a bit of oil, so that it's not being so nasty. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this. Let me just get my glasses on closely so I can see how, where I'm putting it. And because that does need oil on it after it's got kind of an angle there, and it should be hitting that beveled part on the bottom. And I'm pretty sure I beveled it correctly. If I didn't, I'm screwed. Let me check this out. Let me turn this from this side. It feels smooth there. It's turning the gear, so I'll be winding the watch. And let me pull this this uh, lever set mechanism out with my thumbnail. That's the handy part about having thumbnails and stuff, by the way, because you can do that. And make sure this is meshing properly. Still feels a little bit. No, it's meshing. There's no problem there. I think I want to put a little bit more oil. I'm going to put some oil on these gears because I think that the gears are a little bit 
rough without the oil. And just go down a few gears here and make sure that's oiled well. All right, now I'll try it here again. Oh yeah, that's a lot smoother now. And this is where I'd be setting the time. So just make sure all that works perfectly. Yeah, it's starting to feel like it's meshing nicely. So I don't think I have any problems anymore. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's good. Seems to be smoother one way than the other way. But whatever. I'll just take that off again and make sure that turns. Hopefully I'm not boring you with the world's longest video here. And that slides into place. There we go. Now I can wind the watch. And there we go. That's good. So that's all together now. All together now. All together now. Now I'll take this gear off here, which is the minute wheel. Take that off because I need to start assembling the gears. The gears. I want to do... Oh, I touched the watch. Jeez. You idiot. Don't touch the watch. Don't touch the watch. Get some Rodico in here and just wipe the part I touched here. And just to make sure that a thousand years from now, the boy, the CSI guys don't say, that's friggin' JD. <laughs> so now I want to put the gear assembly back, right? And I do have, I gotta find the main, the mainspring as part of this. And I did, oh, there it is. I did disassemble the mainspring I oiled it and put it all back together again. I apologize for not putting it on video. So, but I'm a good boy. So, this is going to go in here somewhere. Pretty sure. <laughs> Ooh, I almost touched it. I almost touched it. This is a hard lesson to learn. A hard one. All right, where does that go? Mainspring would go on this side. And after some of these wheels go down, I think that the, I'm going to have to look, I'm looking at the watch, because I think I know how this sits in here. So basically, this watch, I look for the, uh, the posts right where that groove is, right there. That groove lines up with this here, so you can rest assured that it goes something like that, which means the mainspring sits right here, and there's a square hole in the top for the mainspring but I can put all of the gears back in and then slide the mainspring in these full plate watches were made that way so you could effectively take the watch replace the mainspring and put it all back together in case they snapped the mainspring or or it just needed to it was weak and needed a new mainspring so I'll, I'm gonna look and see how the the uh, I'm gonna look and see how the gears go back there's my gear picture it's always good to take a photo of this um, even though I could likely do this without the photo, uh, I do take the photo, and I know that the first gear that goes in is uh, this gear right here. This is the first gear that goes in, and that, and I know that goes in with the pinion up. So the best thing to do is orient your watch or orient your photo. Now, somebody said a long time ago, it's orientate, and I said, well, it's either orientate or orient. So one or the other um, but I am going to put a dab of the red oil I can go look at the oils and tell you what they are in a sec but right on this hole because there's no jewel here so that pivot's going to go through that hole and while I'm while I'm doing the, the SO oiling here I might as well oil the inside of this too right and I've already oiled there I've already oiled all of that and I think the rest of this for now is good uh, maybe 
maybe next to that. Hang on, I gotta I gotta look closer here. Just hang on a second. Alright, I'm gonna look at this hole here. That's jeweled. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of oil there, okay? All the jewels for this watch, by the way, were perfect. I don't know why, but they were. So I was very impressed by the uh, condition of the jewels on a note. A watch that looks like it comes from the 1800s. So I'm putting a bit of oil on this. I'm putting a bit of oil right here. I'm trying not to put too much in here, but I'm going to pull my oiler out faster. Remember what I told you earlier? If you pull it out slow, it doesn't put in as much oil on it. If you pull it out fast, it puts a ton of oil on it. I'll show you in a few minutes, but I think I said it backwards. I apologize. I apologize. And I'm going to, I get a little bit too much oil on this jewel here, so I'm going to just smudge that a bit to get remove some of that oil. And then I'm going to put the gears in. I'm going to give it the gears, as they say. So the first one actually is a deep gear, and it goes right in here. There we go. Come on, sit in there. There it is. Second gear would be the center wheel, right? That's this one here, and it goes with the pinion up. So we'll grab that. I'm going to grab the pinion leaves. And these gears are clean as crap because I put them through my washing machine from India. 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 That's where that's I was freaked out when I found out that Eddie or Eddie Freddie Mercury comes from India. So I went to the movie which was amazing. So this here is the fourth wheel typically and it's the uh, the one with the with the pivot or pipe or pivot that holds the second hand. So that's that one there. So you got to be very careful when you reinstall that one. This has a jewel on it. So I'm just going to just gently place this down and see if I can find the hole. I need to get closer, I think. I'm a little bit far away right now. There we go. And be very careful with that. I'm telling you, be very careful. This one here, you just look, look at, it looks like the pinion goes on the, the other way because it's being rid road by the, uh, the, the fourth wheel, right? So now I just it let it swing sideways, but I don't want to pinch it right now because if I pinch it and I, one of the feet is in the way, then you could damage it. So I want to make sure that I, I don't damage anything. I'm going to have to get a little closer here because I'm I'm not close enough. They might see my unhaired head in the way there. So my hair left me when I was like 35. I, we had a very bad relationship, and it just took off. I was like, okay, come on. Do you mean something to me? And I went, no. So it took off. It's a takeoff hoser. So that's that there. And I don't have to put the cannon pinion on yet. I have to put on the plates. But in order to put the plate on, I actually have to put on this bugger. Right? This is the pallet fork. And I want to make sure I've oiled the pallet fork appropriately so it's nice and clean right now and I want to put a little bit of pallet fork oil on the face of the pallet fork so that the oil I use is Mobius 9416 I think, or 9415 Mobius 9415 and this is specifically for the jewels on the pallet fork and when they contact the feet on the escapement, they, the resistance is near zero. And it it's, just works exceptionally. And I've had the amplitude of watches change significantly just by putting a little bit of this on the pallet fork. So let me just... That's good enough. And that's good enough. You don't have to put a lot of that on, just a tiny bit. And if you can do it before you, you actually assemble it, then you don't have to worry about putting it on the feet of the escapement, right? Which is a pain in the ass. So I said the A word. 
Oh my God. Oh my God. Do you think the internet can take it? Now the pallet fork needs to go in and it's riding high because it's got to touch this, right? It's got to be able to work with this particular gear here that's already meshed in. And the pallet fork is right in there, right? I believe it's in there. And it's going to interface with the plate here. So the way this works is that pallet fork goes inside the hole of the plate and then it, it meshes in with the uh, jewel here, the cap jewel. So, so that's how that all works. So it's got to be, this has got to be specky clean, right? And you've got to be able to clean that and make sure that's in good condition. So the first thing I should do is actually, I was a bad boy and I didn't, I didn't clean. Well, I did clean this actually. Oh, Jesus, I need, I need, I think I need a memory test. Yeah. But, but, but what I need to do is oil it. That is the wrong size screwdriver, my friends. The wrong size screwdriver. Let me get another one here. So what I need to do is take the cap off very carefully. Just do this here. So that's screw number one. It's good to actually, if you can, if you can, just to pick these up with the Rodico. And I'll just put this one over here. And the reason why is that if you pick it up with your screwdriver and or your tweezers, you could actually apply a, just a bit too much pressure and then the screw will take a walk. Now I just saw this thing stick to the screw, so I got to bring out my demagnetizer again. Binford 2000 demagnetizer because I got another screwdriver that's magnetized. And I got it way too close to my you know what right now so but I already have the kids so there's no issue there we go I, as I've told you before you folks before I'm an electrical engineer by degree I did work in engineering when I was young when I was a youngin and I had this Arabic dude who was in the labs and he we were doing microwave labs and so the other thing I want to do before I do this I'm gonna put a witness mark on here and so that witness mark will drag from the jewel cap onto the plate that way when I put this back I know that that's lined up perfectly with, with, with the witness mark so that's a little trick I'm not sure where I learned it who taught it to me but it's priceless Jerry priceless so this guy anyway we had a microwave lab and the guy the prof said you just stick your screwdrivers in and you should be able to wedge them in and be able to twist them to work out that capsule, but maybe not if you're talking. Um, the professor said there's 400 milliwatts of, of power through these microwave tubes. He said, but they're harmless. So somebody did a little bit of research on 400 milliwatts of microwave tubes and said, and it was these square microwave tubes, and said that, yeah, you say they're harmless, but the... Uh, the books say that it's very possible for you to not be able to have any children anymore with that with that situation, right? So I got the cap off here and I've cleaned these jewels already, but I want to make sure I get any dust is out of there. And then I just need to put a dab of oil on there. Right? The little dab will do you. So a dab of oil on there. And I, you should probably oil the cap. And then flip the cap over. But it's kind of an either or situation, right? So I think it's just as good to put the oil on the top than it is oiling the cap. Um, and let me, see, let me have a look at the cap as well. And make sure there's no smudgies in pretty good condition and I'm going to take out any any dust or anything that's on there too and then I'm going to look at the witness marks to make sure that that witness mark I put down there is lined up so I can see the witness mark 
and I can see the scratch on this side and so it will go on like so and then I want to line up the screw holes be jumping out on me. I'm going to use the back of my tweezers to push that down. That is flat. Anyway, this dude was standing in front of those microwave. The, uh, let me flip this around so I get the screw. same screws in the right place. He was standing in front of the microwave. Uh, microwave transmission square tubes and then right on the rate the plate that radiates the microwaves mm -hmm. and somebody said hey buddy you shouldn't stand there because it could affect you and you might not be able to have children and he said i already have very much too many children so this is not a problem and i laughed my butt off because he didn't care he said he already had six kids and he didn't want any more, so it was perfect. So standing in front of that tube was perfect. Probably, probably saved him a thousand bucks in uh, medical care, right, to fix him. So, all right, that's in nice and good. That's perfect. Oiled. It had already been cleaned, so I try not to pick this up with my other hand. So this then has to go into here so it's backwards so it means the high part is this way so when i put it like this the low part is this way so i got to take the low part and it's got to face the gears and if the gears are if it goes in like you can find out where that indent is if it goes in like so then it's facing the gears are this way which means the low part it needs to go this way so when i turn it around I got to go like that. So it's got to go in like that. So let me see if I can figure this one out. So what I do to do that, this is my little trick, okay? And please don't steal this trick on me. I'm just kidding. Steal away. That's what watchmaking is all about. It's about learning from others. Or ignoring others and doing it yourself and totally screwing up. That's the other way of doing it. So. I'm going to take a much lighter oil, which I think is a 9010. Is it 9010? 9010 oil. And put that right, let me see, where's that going in? Right here. Yeah, it's funny, that's not jeweled. Eh? It's just a thingamajabby doohickey. And these things right here, you don't have to fart with. These are the banking pins. I would only play with the banking pins if I had a problem with respect to the pallet fork going over too far or not working properly so but that shouldn't be an issue so now we've got to put this in like that um, before i place it in i just want to make sure the mouth of this is clean because i've been playing with it way too much so i'm just going to stick that in neurotico and then i'm going to stick that in this and make sure that it's clean you don't need to oil this but this will be receiving the impulse jewel from the balance as it flings around right so so that's good there and now i need to get up close and i need to reinstall this on the watch so this is the way i do it i'll put that in like that and let me look at where that pipe is there we go so that's in place there and this is between the banking pins all right, now my second trick, again, I should be patenting this stuff. So this is staying in where it is. If I try to put that on the movement and then try to lower it all, it doesn't work. Trust me. It's a, it seems like it's going to work, and then you play with it forever, and it doesn't work. So what I do is I take a piece of Rodico, about that big, like that, and what I'm going to do is put that Rodico right over the pallet fork, and in a way that it's not interfering, I get a little bit less Rodico. In a way that it's not interfering with the gears, and I'm going to push that down using um, 
either my tweezers, I think my tweezers. So I want to basically put that down right here and have that radico stay where it is and push that down like that and I'll use my tweezers just to push the radico down onto the plate so it's staying on the plate like so and then on the other side to do the same thing I don't want that to interfere with the gears so I'll pull that out after everything is in place so I think I think it's good like that just push that down some more so it flattens it because I'll be pulling that radico out after I put the plate on so there so that's the trick there and now when I turn this around like this it's not falling out which is what you want it's not falling out backwards so now I can just okay I'm still good man I'm still good so I need to line this up and then I lower the gear lower these this plate down um, I could put the, the, the uh, mainspring back in place um, uh, I don't need to do it right now but maybe I should uh, that way everything kind of fits so I just look at the square part on the pivot on the uh, the center barrel arbor that's what it's called let me just put that glove in there so it'll focus there's a square part in the center barrel arbor and I'll visually line that up with the square part on the uh, I'll call it the ratchet on the other side or the crown wheel ratchet wheel not sure but I lined the two of them up like that and that way when I put it down like this um, it's close it's close enough to 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 the alignment and then I I can it'll fall in place better as you can see right so and I think it's lined up with the square and as you can see everything's moving here when I move the, the mainspring right and this I think it's fallen in place but I can check it on the other side after I put this in so so now I'll just put the plate in and what I'll do is again the Rodico is holding that pallet fork in place right and I'll just put that in put that in like this like so and I'm going to put three screws down loosely just to hold everything in place loosely so um, and the reason again for that is that I don't want this to be moving I don't want them to, to move out of place while I tweak it so I'm going to get the screws here because I think three of them are exactly the same and maybe two of them aren't holding that the ones that are holding the uh, the plate down for the mainspring so they may be smaller or bigger or something so so I don't want to put the wrong screws in so I'm gonna look at these really closely and make sure they're the right screws all right I think I've paired them up properly here and they're just ever so slightly different right so I just don't want to put the wrong screw in the wrong hole but as you tighten the screws down just make sure they're 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 uh, you're not forcing anything right that's the trick with uh, the stuff is don't force anything so it's funny I had the main lights off for this whole video but I think it's probably clearer for you guys and shittier for me so so I just screw that down and I'm not going to tighten it because I need to put the wheels in place right so just back that off a bit um, I need to pop the pivots in place and that's with my pop pivoty popity poopity poopity boo so it's my pivot popping device so I just tweak the pivots it's kind of like years ago I took uh, I did acupuncture and man did it hurt the lady put all the needles in me and then say said I'm gonna tweak the needles now and I said what does tweak mean and she goes I just do this and I went whoa like that and it was perfectly comfortable until she did this tweaking thing right and all that did was friggin make me scream so so I got, let me see, what do I have here from a whole perspective? I have this whole, this one here now. And again, I know the plate goes over and the plate may reuse some holes, but the first thing I need to do is, is tweak those, tweak those gears. So, and so what I do, I just use the weight of the plate and I'm not screwing anything down tight. I'm just backing it off a bit. So now I got this like this, right? Um, I can pick this up now. I may actually put my other glove on because I know I'll be farting with it with two gloves. So let me just do a Bugs Bunny on this hand here. This afternoon I gotta help my wife wrap some trees. Right? Two people that wrap. My wife and Snoop Dogg. 
two wrappers. Snoop Dogg's like freaking 55 now or almost 60. He's like very old Snoop Dogg. There we go. He's a probably a Snoop senior dog. I guess when someone asks how old I am, I said, well, is that in Snoop Dogg years? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to look down and see if this is in place. And I don't think it is. But anyway, let me let me entertain you. So my tweaking device is this here. So you can get this at any knitting place or whatever. And this allows me to go in and move around. And I can just move things until, move the wheels until they all drop into place. So I'm not going to videotape that because you put the screws on, but you put them on super loose. And then you push the wheels around until they find home, right? You're going to have one wheel that's higher than all of them. And then as you go around, it's, you, you're, then there's the next wheel that's higher than all of them. You just keep going around until they all drop down. So let me go do that. I'll be right back. All right, so I tweaked them all. I had to turn my big light on here, but I tweaked them all, and now I've got to screw down, screw them down a bit more, but I want to check the other side to make sure all the pivots are showing through. So I'll first just screw these back in here very carefully. I'm holding the movement. I don't want this to move. Um, but I'm on videotape, which makes it a little more awkward. But I just want to screw these down a bit more, and they may all be in place, so... Again, very carefully tighten this. Don't over freaking do it. Because if you have a pivot that's not through a hole, you're risking breaking that pivot. So so I will, I'm just tightening this just a bit. So look through the top here. And if I keep seeing pivots on the top, I think this one's in. This one's definitely through, this one's through, this one's through, this one's through. This one here I gotta make sure is through. So I'll flip that the other way. Um, I can see my mainspring is not in yet. I can see the seconds. I can see this, this, this. I think we have we have this one here. And I just need to adjust the mainspring so it pops in. So I'll just move that around right now. Just need to play with that. So I just drop it down a bit and then twist it. And then try to get that into that hole. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. See, the mainspring is now in the hole. Let me look there. Can you see that? That mainspring there, the square peg is now in the square hole. So that's good. All of the pivots seem to be showing. So I'm going to I'm going to put this in the movement holder again. The Myers number 58 movement holder. And I don't want to squish the... This is a lever set mechanism, and the lever is, where is that lever? Where is the lever? Leave it to beaver lever. I don't think it's squishable right now, so I think it's on the inside. So I can't see it, so I'll just tighten this down a bit. Like that. <clears throat> and again, I'll tighten these a bit, but I think all of, all of the... Uh, this one here is the only one that looks like it's... It's in there, but it doesn't look like it's in deep. I'll just move the, uh, I'm going to just move the spring here. Make sure it's in there. And I'm going to take my glove off because these gloves, using the screwdriver with these gloves is tough. So you don't get a good grip on them. Okay, I can see the pivot coming through now on the top. And I'm just going to tighten this very loosely. Loosely is my middle name. And let me just turn this around again and have a look at the pivots on the other side. Well, before I do that, because I've got the mainspring sitting in there very nicely, I will take the this here and I want to put the cap on the barrel. A little bit of oil on top. The red oil. I'll tell you what this oil is in a second. Okay, so... Stop. Just calm down. I'm going to tell you what the oil is. Calm down. I'm telling you, if you don't calm down, then you and I are going to have issues. <laughs> so that's that's good there. Now, this goes on top like that, so it's going to cover up this 
screw here, so I don't want that to happen. So let me just deinstall this for a sec. Have a look on the other side. Look again, look at all the pivots. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good. And flip it over the other way. And just move the spring again. We're good. All the pivots are good. I just want to make sure the pivots are sticking through the jewel holes or the holes. Right? That's all. It's more important than anything. So I'm telling you, it's super important. So that's good. Every, all the pivots are out or in, whatever. Now I can tighten this bugger down. So I'm going to tighten it down a bit more. And that's tight. Just back it off and then tight. That's what I do. I back it off first a bit because it gives me the feel for it. And then I tighten it. Okay, that's all tightened right now. Now this plate can go on top. And I've already, as you saw, I just oiled it. So I can just put that on top somehow. Come on, sit down. Come on. You're making a liar out of me. Oh, there we go. So there we go. And the holes for that are clear. You can take the tweaker out. So you got to get yourself one of these. It's like a knitting needle or something. I'm not sure what it is, but it works super well. For, uh, for tweaking those. Um, I've got my box of, I've probably put in other videos, but I got my box very close to me that's got all of the, the tools I need for reassembly or disassembly. Again, I'm going to tighten that loosely and make sure that I've got function a functional watch. Because what I'll do is I'm going to turn that mainspring and see whether I've got some action on the pallet fork. All right, so that's not super tight right now, so I got to remember to tighten it later. So I need to turn the mainspring. Where is that? There we are there. So I'm going to wind this up. Set the right. Put some pressure on the mainspring. Okay. Yeah, that's getting it's a little grindy here for some reason. What the heck is going on? Take a look at the other side, make sure we're good with everything. Um, I think we are. That looks good, that looks good. That's catching properly. That's good there. Alright, that's good there. I do believe I need to tighten this just a bit. I think there's an issue. Look at that, eh? That little friggin' thing moved. So, and I think that's what happened before. So now when I tighten this, it's perfectly integrated. And I can put some action on the mainspring. There we go. So now the mainspring is tightening. And I just want to make sure that I can, that this will move for me. And it will. Look at that. So, and it pops back, so that's working perfectly. And now when I turn this, this will pop back into place here, like that. There we go, so that's working perfectly. Um, and now all I do is, is I will take, I'll use my little pokey device that's a gajillion dollars, and I'm just gonna poke that pallet for oh, 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 oh I forgot something I need to remove this rotico from the center See that rotico in there that's the rotico that was keeping the pallet fork in place I just grabbed the rotico where I pushed it down like that and very carefully you need to move that out of place here And Rodico is pretty good for this because it just isn't. You can pull on it and it won't break anything. So I just want to make sure I get all the Rodico out of there. And there we go. Here comes the Rodico. And then I'm going to go look inside to make sure I got every bit of it. No, it looks like there's a little tiny bit of Rodico on the banking pin. Take that off. There we go. Now, 
I'll put that back on there and I'll reintegrate that Radico. Now, <clears throat> when I touch that pallet fork, it should snap back. And there we go. There we go. That's a good snap there. That's a good snap there. That's snapping back perfectly. So now, based on my memory, I know I have to tighten these screws. Because before, I told you I wasn't going to tighten them. So now I can tighten those down nice and snug. That way the watch doesn't loosen itself up, right? And as you know, I already put a little bit of oil on that. I'm good there. Um, now these, I could oil the top of these just a bit. I don't want to put too much on there because I already oiled them from the other side and that's where the pressure typically is. So I'm going to put a little light oil on this one here. That's where the pallet fork is. And then the escapement one as well. And there's actually an oil cup for that on the jewel, right? I'll pull my oiler out slowly to get some oil on that. That's good. Now I'll clean that oil off because I want a heavier oil, the red oil, for the next gear. So the more friction, the more the heavier the oil you, you put down. So I'll just oil that. And then this gear is definitely heavy. So this is wheel wise this is one is the main spring two is this center three is the intermediate and four is usually where the um, four is where the second hand is so a little bit of instruction for you and just to make sure the oil doesn't travel anywhere i think i oil a little bit too much in the center wheel i'm going to just peel off a little oil from the center wheel because the remainder has gone through the hole and gotten around that pivot. So so we're good there. Now I oil the mainspring, but I'll just dippy doopy doop from the top here. So again, I can... That'll find its way in there nicely. There we go. All right. Now what I want to do is push the cannon pinion back on. Now this is a pocket watch, so... It shouldn't be that difficult to do that. Um, so I'll flip this around, just make sure I've got everything I need here. Right? So just squeeze that in place just a bit, like that. And then I've got the cannon pinion that I need to put in place. Now sometimes I'll use a staking set and I'll put a stake over the top and I'll push the cannon pinion down while I have the stake over the top. So. That's probably a safer way of doing this, because then you've got uniform pressure around that cannon pinion, right? So, and you don't oil the cannon pinion because you want that to stay where it is, right? So I want to push that down in place. And again, like I said, it's probably I should take a a, uh, a stake from the staking set and use that to push it down. What do you think? It's a smarter way of doing it, and you don't have a problem then. Right, um, and a lot of times, like I'll put the second wheel, a seconds wheel in first, and then put in the cannon pinion because sometimes you put that in place and it doesn't want to go in. Right, so just put that in there, and then I'm going to go to my staking set and get a good size stake here to use on that. So there's the oil I use for my lathe. I think that's zero W twenty. There is a beautiful micrometer that I picked up online. And it is a Bergeron micrometer. So this is a beauty, man. A beauty. And I had those, both those things were on top of my staking set. So just remove the staking set. Oh, but deck of cards in case you guys want to see a card trick later. I can do that for you. Um, and then I'm going to open my staking set up and find the right steak. It's not the kind of steak to eat for dinner. So I just need a a broad stake that will go on top of the cannon pinion. So I'll pick one up here, this one here, and I'm going to see if it just rides on the top of the cannon pinion. Nope, it's got to be bigger. So I think I'll pick a much bigger stake because I think that uh, it's a bigger cannon pinion. 
so there we go this one here might go there we go perfect so that goes over nicely and I'll look at the gear on the top I'll look at the leaves of that wheel to make sure it lines up with the leaves of the other wheel so I don't accidentally damage the wheel as I push this down so there we go so that's lined up and now I'll take this here and I'll put some pressure on this so I can tap it down as well but I think a little bit of pressure and it'll work let me look at the lineup no it's slightly off now and I think right there it's probably good and push that down a little more now it's perfectly integrated so now the cannon pinion is in there nicely and if I turn the uh, put a little bit of pressure on the just basically use this again and if I pull the lever out here try not to touch this with my hand like that this should turn the secondary wheel and that then should turn the cannon pinion and look at that works perfectly and that my friends is actually very smooth so that's working very smoothly so very impressed so I'll put this back and when I put the lid on I want to make sure it doesn't squeeze this so so that's that part and now I need to put on the hour wheel and I don't need to oil that or do anything with that I just want to put it on like this because you don't want to smudge oil around things and that should settle in and it'll integrate with the leaves on the top of the intermediate wheel perfectly and so those are on there and then the next thing is the watch face right or I can put on before the watch face the dust ring would be nice to put on but I let me think what should I do watch face or dust ring I can't remember um, if I don't put on the watch face then this is gonna fall out right so I just take that off and I want to put the ring on see if that ring can the dust ring will go on first right I think I'll get another pair of gloves on just so I don't get yelled at by certain watchmakers out there that go you're not wearing your gloves you're gonna leave marks on the watch and you know what I looked up some old videos of watchmakers guess what they weren't wearing finger cots right that's what they call them and I try to wear finger cots but those things are way too tight I don't know you guys can suggest where can I find a good pair of finger cots that aren't super tight there's the dust ring here so I'm just gonna wipe this down a bit uh, I believe it I didn't clean this because it wouldn't fit in one of the containers for the cleaner so so I do need to wipe it down just a bit just to make sure there's no leftovers in here and I'm not shining any of this stuff up because it's vintage folks vintage so there we go that's like that and I think it goes on like this like that because it's beveled on one side so I think I can just put that on like this but before I do this you actually have to tighten the screws on for the watch face so I do have to put the watch face on first darn it I do let me put the uh, hour wheel back again so, trial and error baby trial and error now one thing this doesn't have I noticed that this watch does not have a leaf spring so I need to go to my department of leaf springs and see if I can find a leaf spring that'll help push down the center wheel so let me go find for the leaf spring Alrighty, I'm back. I call these things leaf springs, but I was stupid. So they're called dial washers. So I've got some dial washers here of all different sizes. And this is a pretty big dial washer that would be required. So I'm going to see if I can find a large, extra large dial washer and, and see if I can, uh, if, these, if this dial wash will make the grade. I think these are even too small, even though they're large. I think this is a pocket watch dial washer as you can see that ain't gonna work that's way too small so I gotta look at other dial washers I got tons of them here but I don't think they're big enough so I thought I had another thing of pocket watch dial washers 
I'll have to look in my parts bin now and see if I can find the world's biggest dial washers. They're all small, small. I know I have dial washers. So these ones are... These look, this is a different looking container, so maybe it's got the big ones. Eh, that's not too bad. These are a lot bigger. Let's see if this one fits here. Look at that. Look at that, folks. That fits. So, might be a little bit tight, but I can deal with that. I can deal with that. So, these are size whatever. These are huge. Huge dial washers. HDWs. HDW. Let me check the other one. I gotta check the one that's beside the bigger ones. See if this is even bigger. Probably not. Oh, these are even bigger. Look at that. I do have big giant dial washers. Let me just grab this one. I'll put it over here and then grab a big one. A big one. Look at the size of this bugger. Look at that. That is absolutely perfection. So that's a big huge thing of dial washers. You got to have these because what that does is it the face pushes down on the dial washers and then the dial washer pushes down on that on that wheel on the center on the uh, the hour wheel and it keeps that wheel down so it's contacting the minute wheel the intermediate one so I'll put those back these dial washers back in my parts supply if you're doing part pocket watch works work you need a friggin shitload of parts so that's the bottom line on pocket watches now I clean this up a bit but I'm gonna wipe it with my Rodico because that works so well but I already clean this so I'm just wipe the face off just a bit get rid of dust stuff like that there and smudges smudges dust and smudges i see no fingerprints see this this has got to be a railroad grade because it's got a 24-hour clock on it it's probably freaking canadian i just got a 24-hour clock on it it's got like 24 hours it's got the roman numerals on the edge so is that canadian gotta be so now i'm going to lower this onto the whole watch right so just line up where the pivot is here for the uh the pivot for the thing of a jobby doohickey the pivot for the second hand so i'm going to line that up and hopefully you're still looking at what i'm looking at but just move it over like this a few times and then line that up now the screws need to be loosened so I'm going to pull this whole thing out and loosen those screws up. Now, one thing I didn't do is before I put this in the cleaning machine, I forgot to make sure the screws were tight again, but it looks like they survived. You don't want them leaving you, okay? These are, there's no divorce when it comes to screws. So you want them to be there when you need them. I may have to put my glove on again, folks, because I think I might have to push down on this. I can move that like this and put a little bit of pressure on the dial. This is a tricky part. You gotta rock it to make sure the dial feet go in there nicely, but sometimes it'll go up on one side and then the dial feet... Oh, I know what I gotta do. I have to make sure that the... This is lever set, like I said before. I need to make sure that lever comes out. Otherwise, the dial is not going to go down. So I need to grab that lever. I think it's right here. I need a smaller screwdriver. See if I can grab that lever and pull it out. There we go. That was my problem. The lever was not out. Lever set. Leave it to beaver lever. There we go. So that lever is there. Everything seems to be down. And I just need to screw in these little tiny screws to keep the dial down. I think that might be it for watchmaking for today. Um, again, Bill, I need to get at that 7750, but I think I need to wait till I'm on Christmas vacation. Maybe next weekend if I've got absolutely nothing to do. Because I had to get this watch out of the way in order to... Uh, uh, I think I'll clean the parts on the 7750 today and let them dry off. So 
that's all in there the dial is in there nicely so there we go now I want to put the ring on and again just because I'm a nice guy I'm going to I think it goes like this and then the ring would go on it would go down and make sure the ring fits nicely so where is the winding mechanism right there so I'm just gonna lay this down like this right on top of the ring and make sure it's lined up and then I'll just push down a bit because I think I need to work the ring in All right that's the tricky part and I'm gonna to do that I gotta put this glove on again <coughs> Jeez, <laughs> that was not good <laughs> alright wonder how long this video is gonna be watch a watchmaker at work right oh my god what is this guy doing this guy is the shittiest watchmaker in the world so I just have to make sure this is this goes down like that and just push that dust ring in and then when you push it in just check the edges to make sure the dust ring is all the way in and then you see how that's not a line there try to align that dust ring with those holes because it needs to be aligned and you can just you can use a screwdriver and lightly tap it right with the hammer just to move it or just by using your hands you can shift it over and that's what I've done there so that looks pretty good so that's in place so all I need to do now is address the mainspring so I can't remember where I put the mainspring for this thing where did you put the mainspring buddy I think the mainspring is in this giant container so what I want to do, I still have a little bit of work to do on that mainspring before I reassemble it. And I want to take off, take the pivots off the top of the mainspring. I'll leave this like this for now. And actually it doesn't need to be in there. It can go in here or I can put it on a comfy cushion. So I'll get the comfy cushion out and I need to address the mainspring. So I did not address the mainspring yet. And I might get my famous dunker tool out to clean the mainspring but I still want to pop the screws off the top of this right and oil that I, if I if I can get away with not taking the studying the mainspring off I will do that so because I can use lighter fluid in my dunker tool to do that so if I can just grab that mainspring and then remove the uh, screws from the top of it the right screwdriver and this is perfect because the mainspring is relaxed right now there we go that's one and two and I'm hoping that this whole thing doesn't come off hoping and praying at the same time Two things that watchmakers do when they're working on watches. There we go. So take that off very carefully. And this is the one on the inside, so when I pick this up, I'll make sure it's closer to me. And this is the one, grab my screwdriver again, on the outside. And so when I pick this one up, I'm going to use Rodico this time because it's kind of fell in. That's on the outside, so I put it there. And then the question is, can I grab my screwdrivers and and pick the cap off? Oh, you know what? It's moving, which is a good sign. Now, I didn't score it yet, so I'm just going to look and see if I can... There. I, I've scored it and there's a little tiny mark right there so they're pretty much they're pretty close so I think I can put a little bit of pressure on both sides of this to lift it up right just pressurize it and lift it up a bit and that should get it out of the hole and then I can oil that I just don't want the mainspring to go flying on me or the cap I don't care actually if it flies, pops out, not a big deal. There we go. If I got it out, I'll just pick that up with my tweezers. 
very carefully and turn that around. So I can clean that with pegwood and this one here. I'm going to pegwood that as well. Where's my pegwood? Ooh, a mo pegwood. Ooh, a mo pegwood. This is friggin' tiring right now today. This is wearing me out, man. It's wearing me out. There we go. That's a nice piece of pegwood there. And so I will. Very carefully rub anything off there that's pegwood. Now this looks super clean. Normally I would throw this into a lighter fluid and just do the thing on it. Um, but I'm going to do this instead, which is just scraping the jewel with pegwood, which would remove any gum that's on the top. And you can look at it again really closely to make sure you got any gum off of that thing. Pegwood is amazing. It's amazing. And I also use my Rotico. Hold the Rotico. Get everything out of the way here. Hold the Rotico like this. Hold the jewel setting like that. And then just move the Rotico over that like that. Right? Now this time I'm going to be a good boy. And I'm going to put the oil, the wonderful oil, on top of the cap. And then flip the cap over. That way, the end of the pivot is touching the cap. There we go. That's nice. And then now, when I flip that over, grab that with my tweezers. I'm looking for the witness mark. Can I see? Can I have a witness? Can I have a witness? I think the witness mark is on the other side. Where is that witness mark? Don't you move around on me. If I put it in like that, is that the... Yeah, that's the witness mark. I can see it right now. So if I just go down like this and drop this. I may have to use my wood here. Did it flip? Yeah, it flipped. That's good. If it didn't flip, then I would have to uh, re-oil it. So, where is that witness mark again? I think it's right there. Darn! I gotta rotate it. Um, I should have just had my thingamajobby doohickey ready. There we go. Now I am going to rotate that just a bit. And I'm going to hold the. Uh, you know what? I think it's good. It looks like it's nicely in place. So get screw number one. Make sure I got some gooey gummy stuff on the end of my tweezers. So every now and then it doesn't hurt to jab your tweezers into this stuff here, right? It's not pegwood, it's it's like balsa wood. Sometimes I just can't rem remember the name of things because you don't call it anything when you're when you're working with it. You just use it. I think the screw is the one that's in question here. Stay. I'm currently not breathing. There we go. That one's in good enough. Nice and loosely, but I'll tighten it in a second because I want to put the second one on. And you want to make sure that you don't put one on too tight because it'll rock. And you don't want it to rock. So you just set the screw down and then move it in place. And then away you go. 
I'm not doing much of a close up here, but I'm talking you through it though. Now, and then when you start screwing, just make sure the threads are catching. Because it could be another issue if the threads don't catch. You uh, could screw everything up. So there, I'm doing that one, and I'm going to tighten that one. That's good. So now I've got everything tightened, and what I'm going to do now is throw that into the dunker tank. Oh yeah, the dunker tank. And I'm also going to check the upper pivot. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just looked everywhere for my famous dunker table, and I found it. But I've already dunked the balance in lighter fluid, which is great. Old school watch repair. And, and then I didn't need my dunker table. Turns out that I think I did a video on it. And, and basically you put the lighter fluid in here. And then you raise up the table to meet up so that the, the, um, so that the balance is soaking in here. So, so that's the way this works. Um, I use it all the time and I didn't realize it was not where I normally leave it. So, so that's the dunker table. Um, but I don't need it now, so because this is clean, I gotta look at it again to make sure it's it's actually clean. And I think it likely is. I'm just gonna puff it a few more times under duress and just lean it on the thing here a bit. But it's basically been basically sitting there for half an hour, so it should be fine. So I will move this out of the way because now I've got to reassemble this balance. So, <clears throat> so I got to check the mouth, the mouth. I got to check the mouth on the balance so that it lines up perfectly. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this in here. Right, the Myers number 58 movement holder. And where is the lever for the lever set mechanism? I don't want to be squishing that. There it is. So I need to, I should have put this balance back on the, here I'll just give you an example of how this works. So just for you people that love dunker tables. So the dunker, the fluid goes in here. I took this nut and I got rid of the threading and everything and I smoothened it out so it's like that. It's a brass nut I bought at a hardware store. And then the balance goes inside like this and then you fill this thing up with lighter fluid and then and just don't hit it with your hand you idiot and then you just move this up and then like that and it raises up and it sinks the balance and it's under controlled conditions as I call it so this works exceptionally well I like my dunker table but I don't need it right now so I wanted to put the watch back in its place. I put the watch back in its place. All right, watch. I'm just kidding. So let me just put this back in my number, Myers number 58 movement holder. Myers number 58. I'm going to grab this just a bit, not too much because I don't want the uh, face to be under any distress. So there we go there. Now, now just look at what side the uh, you got to look at what side this is on here the uh, pallet fork and just flip it to the proper side. So I want to probably enter from this way and then ro rotate inward this way. So given that, I think it's in perfect condition. It's in the perfect situation. And I've already lubed up the jewels top and bottom. So let me just try this. Okay, so. You got to start at an angle like this because the impulse jewels on the bottom facing the other way, like that, and then you got to let the mouth grab the impulse jewel. So I'll rotate it like that, and this should actually, when I get it around, should start ticking. Because if it ain't ticking, then it's not thicken. It doesn't even rhyme. And there we go. Look at that. She's a beauty. And I'll be measuring the amplitude on that after. So, but the first thing I want to do is get that screw in place. And there it is there. So I'll put that right on the movement like that. There we go. 
and I will use my famous stick here to hold this down a bit while I screw the screw in place. <coughs> the famous stick. And I, you don't want the balance staff to be squished. So as you screw this in place, if the balance is good, it's not going to get squished. It's going to be in perfect position. So I think this is perfect. No issue at all. I need to put my goggles down. There we go. So she's running perfectly now. I can put the cap on my oil. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do a slow-mo of the amplitude right now to see how she's doing. She? How do we know it's a she? So I just take my iPhone and... There, three second video of the of the balance. I just want to see how the swing is. There's a swing on the balance. And I'm looking at three more than 360 degrees. So that's excellent. That's a more than 360 degree swing on the balance. If you look, pick one arm and watch where it ends up. And it's way beyond that. So I should be able to put that in my timing machine and then time it. So we're gonna do that too, just to make sure it's keeping good time. Well, my timing machine is the it's the time grapher Binford 5000 so it's a time grapher and I'm just going to throw that in right now and see what it's what the timing is all right I just put it on my Witta Cha 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 1900 and I've got it to one second per day the amplitude is not super high it's around 170 with for a watch from the late 1800s so that's not too bad <clears throat> that's fairly acceptable I think um, and when I was using the regulator and just pushing it back and forth a bit uh, I didn't have much uh, like within a window I was just tweaking it and it was uh, it was moving so the other thing I should do is throw a compass on the top and to see if I got any magnetism issues here with this thing because it is pretty old so it might have a magnetism issue so you just throw that on top like that and you look at it is it shaking a bit it's got a little tiny bit of a shake so I could try to demagnetize this and see if I get a better uh, result in the amplitude because the magnetism does affect the watch I just happen to have my demagnetizer here and I don't want to F up the hairspring by doing it but if I move this back a bit I'll show you how this is done so <clears throat> you saw the magnet rattling just a bit right so I want to bring this in press the button and then bring it out slowly so i'm going to do that and i don't like doing this that much but it's got to be done so here we go 1001 1002 1003 and then you bring it out slowly and move it away and turn off the machine that's how you do it and i'm just going to throw the compass on top again and see if it and there you go perfectly demagnetized you can see that compass is not rattling a bit back and forth that's what was happening before which means that it was magnetized which means the hairspring was likely magnetized which means it doesn't really work as well when it's magnetized so there it is there and i'm going to videotape the amplitude again just for the heck of it just for the halibut because i can actually tell the amplitude using my uh, phone There, that's a three second video. Uh, let me see what I get. Uh, pretty much the same as before. It's going a bit 150, one, about a 360 degree turn on it. It's not much better than that. It'll let it work itself in. Um, and over time it might be, the amplitude might get a bit better. So, but that's pretty darn good uh, for an old watch like this. So the next thing for me to do, so, so a needle pulling thread. So a needle pulling thread. So the next thing for me to do is actually case it. So I get the case right here. Um, now I, I'm on both fences when it comes to uh, putting the hands back on, but I do find if it's cased first, then it's a little more stable when you're pressing down on it to put the hands back on. So I'm going to move the hands out of the way here. Um, the hands look okay. You can see that this hand here is a, probably a little skewed to one side. It's bent. So do I want to bend that back? Yeah, I don't know. 
that's tricky so if you have a hand that's bent like that you're better off this one's in good condition the second hand or the minute hand you're better off probably not bending it back um, the case is in pretty good condition there's no issue here it's nice and shiny uh, there's no left over anything so it's pretty good there's some scratches on the inside again i can wipe this down a bit with rotico to catch any particles of anything if there are any um, i already wiped this down before when i got it but it had been a couple of weeks since i uh, did any work on it so i'll just wipe this down and then i'll take a watchmaker's cloth um, this one right here and i'll wipe it again and then i'll blow it off with a uh, puffer uh, to make sure it's done and dusted, right? So there's that. I also want to oil just a little bit on the inside of here, right? So, so what I'll do, first of all, I'll get the, the cloth here and I'll clean it off a bit on the inside, right? I want this thing actually to look vintage. So if I work on it too much, I can polish it up and make it look brand new. But for old pocket watches, I am told that they look a lot better when they're vintage. So you don't want to screw with the vintageness of the pocket watch. So I'll have to put the, um, these, the stem and crown go in after. And they were thrown through the machine, so the cleaning machine, so they're pretty clean. But the pocket watch will go in first. And <clears throat> let me see which way do I want to put this in. So it's going to come up like that through there through there through there it's good english man good english so what i want to do here let me see if i can find out where the stem is there it is there so this would be this would go that's the top that's the bottom the bottom yeah this would go in like it would go in like this i gotta move my camera back because you guys are gonna get mad at me so <clears throat> there we go so basically that's the lip there so the watch is going to go in this way right so just because they only got one hand to work with because of somebody on the internet who said you shouldn't be doing pocket watches unless you're wearing a glove again i watched old videos with dudes doing pocket watches dudes doing pocket watches and none of them had gloves let me case this thing so i'm going to basically put it in like this Right, there's where the crown is on the top. So I should be able to slip it in like that. And then I'm gonna slip the crown in first, right? And I know I'm a bad boy here, but that'll keep the watch in place, right? So it's in, it's not gonna bug anybody. Uh, that crown's not gonna stay in like that, but I'll get the screws on first, okay? So screws on first, isn't that who's on first anyway get the screws on first um, I'll put this one in first and when I put the screws in I always angle the pocket watch at an angle so if you if you drop the screw it doesn't fall into the balance brilliant right so I learned that the hard way all right I think I had my video off the whole time I just cased this watch so I'm a little bit pissed off that I did that but what I did is pretty simple I'll go back is I took the movement and I had it in this hand and I just pushed it up into the uh, watch here and then I tightened the screws I had to fart with these and switch holes because one of them wouldn't fit in the other side so I just moved them over right nicely um, I had demagnetized the watch and I'm not sure if I showed that I got to look at my videos but I had demagnetized this watch because I had the uh, my little compass um, and Again, I'm not sure whether I showed that or not, but I just put my little tiny compass on top of the balance like that. And before it was rattling back and forth, like just so slightly, just pulsating a bit. So I threw it into my demagnetizer, slowly pulled it out, and my demag pressed the button and then slowly pulled it out. This is my demagnetizer here. Press that button here and then you leave it on and you slowly pull the movement out and that'll demagnetize it nicely. And it did. And then I cased it like that I put the crown in and there's a screw right here that I loosened put the crown in and then tighten the screw didn't have to tighten it a lot and then I press the the hour hand first and look for the gap so I just look sideways like that and you look for the gap in the hour hand and that looks pretty good 
and then I put the second hand in second because I want to make sure that the hour hand can clear the gap, right? And I will set the time now to make sure that hour hand is is actually um, clearing the gap. And let's see, is that going to work? Feels crusty, feels tightish when I'm turning, so I'm not sure if I have an issue here at all. But let me just do it this way. And I just want to make sure that the two hands aren't going to touch. And they clear nicely, right? Because you don't want them touching. They're pretty friggin' close. I don't know. Do I, do I rock it up a bit or leave it like this? Because when I go down to here, it's almost touching the face. But here, it's up a bit. So, don't know. So I just move the hands back here. It still feels a bit grindy. Right, and I'm not sure why. It shouldn't, because the. Uh, there we go. That's better. Yeah, that's a pretty. That's pretty close. So I might be able to rock that away just a bit with the uh, with this tool here. So if I rock it up just a bit like that, then there's less chance of it touching that second hand as it swings around. Right. The whole movement seems to time better when you move it backwards, even though I don't like moving a pocket watch movement backwards. So so let's press on the minute hand here. So there's the minute hand, and I'll just press that on top. It's aligned at 12, so I just get it as close as possible to 12. But realizing these are old watches, um, sometimes in this world, maybe close enough right so we just put it on a little bit of pressure and then i can tip that like that and then push down and so once i've pushed down like this i want to rock this away because it's too close to the to the hour hand so i can rock it back just a bit again making sure that it's on good but it can clear the hour hand so in this case, it's clearing the hour hand without a problem. And I think it's on good enough. I gotta look with my close up device. It can go down further. It can go down further. So let me just get in here and press down. And that's pretty good there. So as I'm pressing, I'm looking for the gap again and making sure this hand clears the gap. Time right now is 157, so I'll set it for 157. So there's 157 and some change, right? And then I'll press this in and gotta make sure the gears catch, right? 150. Seven is probably 158 in about two seconds. So 157 there. Press that in, and then I want to make sure that the it's going to wind. And there we go. It's winding. This is loose. I don't like the looseness of this crown, but it's the way it is, baby. That is the way it is. There's no changing that unless I tighten the screw a little more on the back. So there we go. That's a 157. So I'm just going to keep an eye on that and see if it's keeping good time. And close that up and make sure that the the lens or the when I'm turning this, it's not touching the glass. So I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. I'm just going to So another thing you can do is that once you get it going, just watch it for a second really close to see if the the tip of that the hand is moving appropriately, right? Just pick a piece of whatever on the watch face and then you can tell whether it's moving or not. And the gap is closing and it's moving. So you just watch watch the uh, minute hand and then pick a pick a fleck or the or actually the markers, the indices. Watch the indice and you'll see it closing the gap. So You've got no problem if it's doing that nicely, and obviously it's ticking away nicely. If I flip this over again, get the old thumbnail from heaven in there, flip that up, and you can see the watch is running nicely. So that's what I would call a successful watch um, servicing, maintenance. It wasn't working before, so I would call it repair. 
because it wasn't working um, and it had an issue uh, with with the setting mechanism so I'm going to close this down and see if I can push on both sides here with my bare finger here and then I'm going to get rid of that mark completely get rid of that fingerprint and again like I said this is my watch it's no one else's so I'm not as concerned now I've used peak on these things on watches these pocket watches but peak will take gold away so I don't think you want to use it to take gold away I think for silver watches and for the steel cased watches peak works super well it makes a watch look brand new so so I would recommend it for that um, yeah, but not for something like this so I can just buff this up with a cloth like you're seeing right now and there's still scratches but they're it's part of its personality and it's machined a bit the back of the case is a machine case so that's very nice um, and the, the front you can this is glass so the only way I know of cleaning this getting rid of all these scratches is to replace the crystal and or I can grind it which I've done before to uh, to get rid of scratches but you know what it, it looks kind of cool it's got a personality and as you can see the time has changed since when I set it I set it at uh, I set it at 54 or 58 I can't remember it's supposed to be two o'clock right now so I set it wrong <laughs> let me move it over let me move it over because this thing should be running like pretty close to good there we go and I can tell like that the gear flipping back a bit like, like I said because it's an old watch um, 201 move that in place yeah there we go and that's good that's running um, and I know that that gear needs to flip back into place to wind the watch eh? so I think it's no problem yeah, there I can hear it ticking hear that There. I get up to the mic here. Now when I know that, I know that the gear is in place. So and now I can actually I can actually wind the watch some more. I give it a little bit more amplitude. That's good enough. There we go. Done. So that's American Watch Company Pocket Watch. Uh, fully repaired, serviced, whatever you want to call it. So thanks for watching my channel. I'll just bump in in two seconds to say bye hey there JD back again um, it's done and dusted hopefully you got through the whole video I know it's a long one today because we were completely assembling after cleaning this American watch company Waltham pocket watch full plate it's running nicely right now it's actually keeping time um, and as you can see if I pop the back open with my long thumbnail I tell you long thumbnails are Great for pocket watch guys unless it doesn't work <laughs> I'm such a funny guy hang on I gotta get a case opener here just to show you this here so come on there we go so there it is ticking away it's in great condition it looks like it's got a pretty decent amplitude now I videotaped it earlier and it was well over 360 degrees if I were to videotape it right now which I'm gonna do I know you want me to shut up right now to Basically, you can turn me off anytime. That's the beauty of YouTube. So I'm going to be videotaping it right now and just see what kind of amplitude I'm getting. It was demagnetized because it did have a little bit of pulse, a magnetic pulse happening. Oh, shit, that's good. That is really good. Look at that. Look at that. It's going way over 360. So that's an excellent amplitude for this old pocket watch. So this is going to run really well with that kind of an amplitude. So... And you can use a slow-mo on your iPhone if you've got one, and that's a great way of, uh, of taking, uh, basically taking a video of your, of your watch in slow motion to check out the amplitude. So I'm just closing that using a claw so I don't use any CSI fingerprints in the back, but as you can see, this thing looks gorgeous, right? Look at this. This is a nice, nice pocket watch. There we go. So that was it. That was the video. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, I did. I wore a glove this time. Uh, so I'm being uh, true to a gentleman who said, hey, you should have a glove on. So I wore a glove to make sure I wasn't touching the watch movement with my fingers. But I believe I've seen old watchmakers 
and they use their fingers and they don't have gloves on so not sure why but anyway so that's that's it that's it for the video and again thanks for watching my channel i'm jd um, you can email me at jdwatchservice if at gmail.com email me at jdwatchservice at gmail.com i almost did a yabba dabba do yeah, well, that's all folks and if you're interested and next year i think i'll be busy a bit in the first couple of months of next year and then things should slow down a bit and i'll be able to do more watch repair for you folks out there so so thanks a lot again for watching my channel i hope you enjoyed this video and let's do this again